cultures are different in this country and it affects driving. And in my opinion, I've, I've been all over this country and there is a thing about like, you know, aggression in the Northeast, you're in, the, you're in New York or something, there's a lot of honking, but I still don't think there's anything like South Florida. It is the most aggressive shit. The further south you go on 95 in Florida, the wilder things get. One time I was in Miami and I'm driving next to a car and then I see Miami PD come up behind the car next to me. And the, the police officer drives up close to the car and the car starts brake checking the cop, hitting his brakes like back the fuck off of me. And I see the cop going like, raising his hands, like, hey, like, you're not gonna pull him over? No, he did not pull him over. I've never seen anything like that before. But one time I did a gig in West Palm and I'm driving home. I had just met Maceo from De La Soul. I remember this because it's Maceo from De La Soul. Head North 95. I don't know, 10 cars in front of me, I just see an enormous explosion. Boom, huge, huge smoke, fire keeps going, and I'm stopped and I'm like, okay, and at first you're just stunned by what you're seeing. Pretty soon there's police, paramedics, fire trucks, then a helicopter lands on the highway. We've been parked maybe 30, 40 minutes on the highway. Keep in mind that I say highway when I talk about Florida and freeway when I talk about California because that's just how they say it, all right? I just get out of the car. I'm on I-95 and I walk up to a police officer. I was like, hey man, just out of curiosity, I know there's a major accident here, but is there any timeline on when we'll be able to drive? And he was like, I don't know. I go, okay, well, can I turn around in the, uh, the ravine between the north and south side. And he goes, uh, I mean, you could try. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, you can try to, but you know, I don't know if your vehicle will get stuck there. And I go, well, yeah, I guess I don't know if it'll get stuck there either. He goes, right, so you could try. And I go, okay, well, what if I do get stuck? And he goes, then you'll be stuck. I go, well, I guess you'll be able to pull me out. He goes, oh, no, we, we won't pull you out. There's a car on fire. We're not going to pull you out. We're going to keep tending to the shit that's on fire. And I was like, okay, so what do you think I should do? And he goes, oh, I don't know. This, this is all on you. But you could try. I was like, all right, thanks a lot, man. Really appreciate the, uh, the advice here. So uh, I did. I tried. And I didn't get stuck and I made it and that's what class of 2020 that's what I want you guys to think about keep trying and don't get stuck the other time I was driving from the same club in Florida car comes flying past us I mean it had to be doing at least 120 five seconds later another one <laughs> and then you see that they're they're racing each other and they're kind of weaving in and around cars. All of a sudden, I see taillights go up in the air. They're up in the air, they disappear, and then they reappear. We drive up a little bit further, and we see that a vehicle is now upside down on its roof. What must have happened is that one of the cars that was racing hit a car, sent that car up in the air, did a flip, and then landed. And that's why the lights, we saw them up in the air, they were gone, and then the car flipped over. It's a minivan, and it's it's just on the road. So we go over to the minivan, and the, the doors open, and you hear people moaning, and somebody's in the very back. We call 911, we try to give our location as best we can. And meanwhile, it's, it's I-95 at night and, you know, without without emergency vehicles there to like signal, cars are still flying by and this car's sitting there in like the middle lane. I try to explain to the person like, 
you were hurt, what hurt, she's like, ah, like making all these moaning sounds. I'm like, oh my God. And one of them is like, I can get out. Like, I think I broke my hand. Other person is laying in the back seat. Uh, she's like, everything hurts. And um, I'm like, well, look, the, you know, paramedics are on their way. Just wait. And she was like, oh, it hurts. It hurts. I'm like, man, this person is, is really suffering. So, uh, I choked her, you know, I, I, I tried to put her out of her misery, so I just, I held her down and I choked her so that she wouldn't be in pain anymore, you know, so uh, when they got there, they were like, what happened to her? I was like, oh, she was dead when we got here. Oh. Yeah.